Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are now live for what is, I think, the uh, most exciting day of the month, which is <laughs> actually no Eve. It's outturn outturn Eve. Tomorrow is the outturn day. We are here for our preview. And Jenna, how are you feeling about this? Are you? This is not, not your first rodeo, <laughs> but uh, not not my first rodeo. But um, I, I it's, I'm excited to do like a full outturn preview tasting. I'm I'm excited yeah. for it. So. These are, we got a nice little variety and a few little surprises here and there, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm excited to taste through them. Yeah, so welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us on this uh, Tuesday, sort of post holiday uh, evening and well, evening my time in sort of the central US. And I guess if you're on the West Coast, it's, well, it's five o'clock somewhere now. It's an acceptable time to uh, taste some whiskey, but uh, welcome, glad to have you. And I hope everybody had a great holiday weekend. Uh, I guess we should just start with a little question. Uh, who had some whiskey over the holiday weekend? Jenna, did we, what, <laughs> and if so, just, just drop a comment. Which whiskeys were you enjoying over the weekend? Bonus points if it was an SMWS whiskey, of course. Yes. But, uh, we're not going to discriminate at this moment. As we <laughs> major get brownie just, points. Major brownie points, yeah. We were, not, we're not giving anything away, but uh, just curious to hear which whiskeys did you have over the weekend? I mean, I think, Jenna, we've talked about this in the past. Uh, I mean, at least I've shared my opinion. Whiskey, I think for most people, when you think of whiskey, you think of like colder weather. But yeah. I think as I've gone deeper into it and explored different styles of whiskey, I, I really like this sort of lighter, I don't know how to say this without being judged. I don't know, but I like sort of the lighter, <laughs> I think like fruitier floral styles of whiskey. Maybe yeah. we have some of those tonight, but I just think, you know, I, I think I've grown to appreciate those more than I did. And I think some of those are just fantastic for the summer. So. Yeah, I, you know, I don't have a massive selection of whiskeys with me at the moment. Um, but I, I find myself going back to that batch tin a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really, really good. Um, and I think it's, it's that perfect, just, you know, middle ground where it can be cold weather whiskey, it could be hot weather whiskey, it could be, you know, just everyday kind of whiskey, a special kind of whiskey, it really kind of fits the bill for everything. So I've, I've been enjoying that. Um, yeah, that's, that's Jenna, it, Jenna's, Jenna's currently moving. Well, sort of in, you're like in a, a, I'm, a mid space. And, and as you can see, yeah. neither of us see that. <laughs> yeah, we don't have our whole whiskey collections. They're all sort of in a holding cell somewhere yes. until, we, until we get settled. And we both moved. <laughs> and uh, Jenna's kind of in a, an interim state. I'm just, my whiskey shelf was just delivered today and I'm about to get this assembled tomorrow. tomorrow. So uh, until then, we're just kind of left these whiskeys in front of us. Yeah, we'll both be on the same time zone now. Amazing, yeah, we will be just yeah. a few hours apart, which is exciting. We will, know. yeah. So, so we'll have to throw like a really awesome tasting at some point. Yes, yes, I'm yes. down with that. And uh, speaking of awesome tastings, a lot of feedback from you guys just in the chat real quick, I wanna just address, just the question was, which whiskeys were you enjoying over the holiday weekend? I think, you know, it's funny, a lot of pressure to, you know, obviously enjoy an American whiskey on Independence Day. But uh, what I'm seeing here is the, uh, the Scotch enthusiasts are, are on full strength here. Uh, Pickley News says, I dug into the new 78s that came out recently. Um, Jose Milk says, 113.15 uh, and 52.30. And um, I'm just going to go in this. Christine Daisy's had a compass box over the weekend. Eugene Weller Antique 107 was surprisingly, excuse me. One Weller Antique 107 was surprisingly great, says Eugene. Um, yeah, a, a big variety overall. And general, you said the, the batch 10, the, the latest blend was your sort of go-to? Yep. Yeah. It's really freaking good. <laughs> really freaking good, yeah. That's all yeah. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't checked, seen it before, check out the video uh, that Jenna did with Zach and when they previewed the batch 10. That was a, that was a pretty pretty good one and it seemed to be popular because it didn't really stick around for too long. It did not. Yeah. So um, that said, let's let's get into this, guys. Our turn's coming out tomorrow yes. at 1 o'clock Eastern time. So we've got a selection tonight. We're going to be tasting through, really for the first time, five of the, of the many that, that are going to come out. We will, as we usually do, we'll show the full list of the, the casts that are coming out tomorrow uh, at the end of this little preview tasting. But... We're going to be getting pretty deep into five right now. Yes. And I believe we have we have a pretty beefy outturn this month. Good number of casks. And uh, yeah, this is just happens to be the five that we 
toss into a hat and drew name, you know, we just drew it out of a hat and this is what we're tasting tonight. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another way of, of, of trying to think it's out of the head is to do what we did, which is just go through a spreadsheet and actually like really meticulously pick every single one and try to find unique things, which is I think more or closer uh, in picture of reality. We, d we did, Jen and I did get to select the whiskeys that we're tasting. Um, yes, so, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, yeah. I, sorry if that. I didn't mean to, to reveal a whiskey picture, hat. It's it's kind of like yeah. pulling these out of a hat. Yeah, yeah. So. We, well, but they are because we hadn't tasted them at the time, and it's nope. sort of like you know for society members. It's you know when you order something, you kind of rely on tasting notes or maybe our opinions. And so, anyway, we're totally just for, maybe it's me. I'm ninety percent of me is just rambling right now, and we got a whole selection of whiskeys that taste. So yeah. Are you ready, dude? Get into number one. So let's, yeah, let's, what's number one? Which one are we pulling out of the hat here? Let's see. The first one is going to be in our juicy oak and vanilla flavor profile, which is just a really great place to start, I think, to just kind of yeah. wet your palate. Um, and those are those great, like, warm weather. I was just talking about this earlier today, how this flavor profile is really awesome for like these hot summer nights. So this is cask 6.44 Summer Garden Adventures. This is an 11 year space side in a second fill X bourbon barrel at 56.8% ABV. Let's see if I can get this camera to work. Maybe not. Oh, yep. There we go. Yeah, so number one. All right. I feel like I haven't done this in a long time. I'm like a little rusty. <laughs> it's been what, like a week or two? I mean, <laughs> yeah, but so. this is five whiskeys. I haven't done an out yeah. from preview tasting in some time. So, you know, just yeah, comment on this juicy oak and vanilla that uh, you mentioned you're pretty into it. I, I'm definitely yeah. into it. I, I've always found that some of just the best values are in this profile. They're oftentimes they're fresher casks. And, and maybe, maybe both when we taste this one, that'll sort of support kind of like what I'm suggesting here. Uh, a lot of first filled bourbon barrels, fresh oak flavors typically. Um, and so really like bold flavors and, and, and bold impact, um, which is uh, I think pretty economical, I think in just in, in making it. And I think the flavor is usually impressive. So I'm big on it. Yeah, this nose is so summery. It's like honeysuckle and jasmine. Yeah, really, really, you know, when you get this sort of creamy vanilla, I love the honeysuckle yellow yes. because I, I couldn't quite place that myself. And I think you're, that's spot on. When we were growing up as kids, we had a honeysuckle bush like outside of our house and we would always go up and you like pull the little part of the honeysuckle flower out of the flower and then you kind of get to taste all that sweet nectar that's inside. I haven't done that in a long time, but that is what this reminds me of. <laughs> Ooh, yummy. So the question, distillery six, is it Highland? This is actually a space cider right here. And uh, just on the nose, it's kind of like a classical space cider. What you would expect with, I mean, for me, it's a lot of orchard fruit, you know, a lot of honey or honeysuckle, as Jenna has just mentioned, um, for the classic creamy approachable notes. I don't know, do they, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know, do they consider six a space side or do they consider it a Highland? Or is it kind of like that whole 24 thing where it's con you know considered both? Well, everybody, we can we can go research. We have it down. <laughs> what, is, what does the bottle say? It says space side, but I think it is yeah. a Highland. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think very many boundaries have been redrawn, you know, in recent That's years. And yeah. so I think some That's some distillers will claim sort of a Highland heritage. Uh, when the fact they're now like located in space side, there, there's some that, that's gonna be what you're referring to. So, uh, that's a fun fact. Whoever wants to dig deeper into it, but that's for the whiskey. Hmm. 11 years old, this one, man, it's oh, 11 years. And Johnny from Whiskey and Donuts said there's great surfing next to this distillery. Yeah. So if you're into surfing, you can go, you know, hit the waves and then hit the distillery on your way out. 
And the question is, do you surf in Speyside or do you surf in the Highlands? Because that's really- <laughs> Yeah, see, there, there you go, Johnny, which is it? <laughs> well, right away, this is just such a pleasant whiskey. I mean, it's really bright and, and creamy. The, the texture is the, my Big first time. question. You know, like super viscous, um, which I, lo I love the mouthfeel like that. But there's almost like a, like as I keep going back to it, as I go back to the nose, like it was so floral in the beginning, but like as I go back to it, there's almost like a, like a very dry, like oaky, like dry wood element on both the nose and palate that I really like about this. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. And Johnny it's answered, like, it depends on the tide. <laughs> yeah, I think that is the case. Um, we're going with, I think, technically space side as, as we'd have defined it. So I think it's on us to carry out the message. But nonetheless, uh, there is no shortage of ambiguity, I think, in whiskey in many ways, uh, especially when you consider like the heritage and just the, the centuries of existence for some of these distilleries and all the changes that have taken place. But, you know, I'm reserving. Um, right to kind of hear other thoughts and, you know, jump in. But the whiskey itself, I don't want to get too off the topic. <laughs> the whiskey, I think, is fan fantastic. It's like such it a great It is really good. Bar. I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, like occasions. Like it's it's great. I, I think it, uh, spring, summer whiskey, you know, for sure. It's, e it's easy to enjoy. It's I think it's easy for me, at least. Uh, well, it's easy to spend some time with it. For, I was surprised at 11 years old. Like then here we go. Like this is the point about this flavor profile, like you get a lot of depth and, and impact at such a young age with this with this sort of the fresher cast. And I think this is one of those whiskeys, I just read the tasting notes and I think these tasting notes are like spot on. I got like every single thing in the on the nose, on the palate, like these tasting notes are, I think, I mean, perfect for this whiskey. I'm gonna read them. Um, it says a cornucopia of fruit, trifle, and Turkish delight aromas with notes of syrupy sweet treats and teasing nuances of dry oak and gentle warm spices. Check, check, yeah. check. This yeah. is those, spot on. Those spices are really are gentle. Like they're definitely there. And when you mentioned that, it wasn't on the forefront of my mind, but like they are gentle, but they are, it is spicy. Yep. Throughout, especially in the finish. Yes. And I like that, like that dry. There is like a little dry, just like wisp at the very end. And I really like that, especially for something that's so viscous, like when you first, you know, like it's first on your palate, it is really like creamy and really viscous. And then you get this little, just like wisp of dryness that just comes and swipes it away. I like this a lot. Perfect summer whiskey. All right. I drank so. All <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to leave a little bit. Yeah, and you have a bottle, full bottles, so you can always go back. I I'm going to go back a little bit later, <laughs> like towards the end, and do a little recap for myself. Um, but that's it. And I think before maybe we continue, Jenna, you want to just share, I guess, the news about the little pr promo we're doing tomorrow. This might just yeah. help because I because I was going to make a comment about where I think this would come into play. But if you want to kind of just share, this is an SMWS of America exclusive. <laughs> so, so, uh, um, are are you talking about the yeah I promo? Know. Okay. <laughs> so we've had so many members, you know, reach out about glassware, and it's something that you know we've worked really hard to, you know, try to get into your hands. Um, and so we're really excited that starting tomorrow, all the way through the 14th of July, um, if you purchase three or more bottles of um, whiskey from this outturn. Um, over the next, you know, I guess week, um, we will send you two free glasses. So yes, so we can demonstrate. I know you you all have seen these glasses, but um, yes, I'll show you a cool one. They are made of crystal, and they are the finest material available for <laughs> sipping uh, single cask whiskey. No, they're really great, and, I, and, and like they are great. a lot, a lot of members have been asking for this, so it's pretty, you know, uh, for logistical reasons, we can't offer them for sale in our shop, but. Um, for members who order, if you order three bottles at least, we'll just throw in a side, which is pretty cool, I, I, yep. in my opinion. The reason I want—I thought we bring that up is just because as we're continuing to taste through these, if you know, as you're watching, if you think anything, if any of them stick out at you, or you're thinking, you know, you want to add a second or third bottle, uh, and just trying to struggle to decide which one, 
to pick. You know, maybe maybe that knowing that you can get the classes will just uh, help you and along with our feedback as well. Anyway, that makes sense. So my point about the first one is I just think this is like such a classical space side representation. <laughs> if you are looking at editing a second whiskey or or if not a first one, I think it's like an easy, it's like such a such an easy like check the box, no brainer. People yeah. are gonna love it. You know what I mean? Your friends, your family guaranteed to appreciate this one. It's not gonna turn anyone off. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of what I think about it. Yeah, and again, to go back, I think this flavor profile is great if you're just getting into this into the society um, I think it's great for let's say you have a tasting lined up and you're doing five you know four to five different society whiskeys I think this flavor profile is perfect to start with it's a great just way to kick start your palate um, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of it yeah some of my favorite Same. society cask have come from this flavor profile yeah and with that yeah a lot of good, good feedback on the glasses yeah <laughs> Eugene <laughs> says, 10,000 times yay. Bill says, hooray, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, yes, Daniel Seward, ooh, I'm sold. Okay, listen, guys, yeah, we're glad that we can offer these. Definitely take advantage, you know, starting tomorrow at one o'clock. We don't mean to make this a, like a commercial pitch. We're just here to taste the whiskeys and share them with you. So we'll kind of cut off that part of the conversation for now. And let's get to our next whiskey. Yeah, let's do it. So, Number two. And also distillery too. Oh, <laughs> so cl <man>! classic. <laughs> so the next one that we will be tasting is cask 2.124, making your mind up. This is a 14 year spay side in a first fill ex bourbon barrel at 55.4% ABV. You know, well, Anyway, I'm going to reserve my comments. So I'll have to retaste it. I want to give it a shot first. Whoa. This smells like a uh, cherry lip balm, like stra strawberry lip balm, like the the chapstick. What is it? The classic chapstick strawberry lip balm. This is it. Whoa. I just want to. Sorry. I, I, I do so much talking. <laughs> I just like, let, I want you to keep rolling with that. So wherever that's taking you, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, like when you stick your nose in a glass and it's like, it's like that instant, sometimes it takes a minute. You got to kind of like keep your nose in there. You got to kind of like do the whole different nostril yeah, thing. Yeah. You got to kind of like whip it around your face. But sometimes that note just comes to you. And that is strawberry chapstick. Yeah, I, I get a hint of the strawberry. Whoa. When you said cherry the first time, I, I was like, I'd latched onto that. I get more sort of like a ripe cherry. Um, like a very damp, like a dampened oak, not as sort of custardy and vanilla, as much vanilla as in the, in the one we just had, you know, also from yeah. Space Side, or maybe this is the first one from Space Side, but um, very, very sort of just uh, intriguing. It, it kind of is, is, a, is a cheap word to use, but I think that this very much is. Yeah. And the reason I think Jen and I were excited about this one to, to taste because it does come from a very well-known distillery, a very popular one. Again, we're not going to get too deep in the distilleries. We're to focus only on the whiskey as we do the society. But nonetheless, it's always really cool. And it's a op cool opportunity to be able to experience a true single cast, like a very the purest form of yeah. a whiskey or, or, or that shares DNA with a, one of the most popular single malt whiskeys in the world. Um, yeah, this is like an iconic kind of yeah. distillery for sure. So yeah. it's very special to have a cask. Yeah. The single form. In yeah. The so, uh, <laughs> the, yeah, I, I think that's always, it's always fun and doesn't happen too often. So here we go. Bill said that, 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 that distillery in a first fill for 14 years is going to be a vanilla and fruit bomb. And I'm telling you, the nose is just fruit explosion. Man, I, you know, it's so, okay. It is so fruity. It is so creamy. Similar to the first one, but, but a oh bit my more gosh. depth. It, it is, it's really, really deep. The, the, the depth of flavor is really surprising at 14 years old and a first full barrel. So there's a lot going on here. Lots to unpack. But in a way, similar, similar to the, the one we just had before. That's freaking delicious. 
Yeah. Like yeah. that's delicious. Yeah. That is fresh. That is fruity. That is like uh, custardy. That is, I mean, that is a custard berry dessert with whipped cream on top. That is really good. Yeah. I, 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 I'm totally on board with what you're saying about sort of the, what we call like a non chocolate dessert. I mean, you're, you're the baker, but yeah. a fruit, a fruit cake uh, is, with, 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 with whipped cream and berries, like yeah. you said, and total and totally. Um, wow. And that is surprisingly, really good. Surprisingly mellow at 55.4%. I know, you know, we had our first one, our, our palates are been woken up a little bit, but um, really mellow at, at that strength, which is, which is surprising. Mm. This has such awesome texture. Yeah. Like the viscosity on this. I mean, I know for me, that's a big thing in whiskey. I, I get like really disappointed when I like taste a whiskey and like the nose is amazing and you're like, your mouth is watering and then you taste it and you're like, oh, and then it's like thin on the palate. Mm. Like I really yeah. love whiskeys that have texture and yeah. you know, like just totally encompass your whole palate. And this is definitely one of those whiskeys, so. Yeah, and going back to what we were saying, really again, like it, it's this is a true single cask um, representation of of a spirit that cool. anybody here today would be hard pressed to I mean, you'd be hard pressed to you know get to a point where you appreciate society whiskey without having gone through um, what this story is putting out. You know, at some point in your own whiskey journey or, or life, yeah, rather, um, yeah, for sure. So. So I think it's 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 funny. It's almost nostalgic because it reminds me of the style of whiskey and the different flavors that I haven't really enjoyed for many years. Uh, <laughs> but it satisfies like my, you know, desire for a, a pure whiskey. You know, at full strength, unfiltered, right, uh, and really just natural in presentation. So it's it's really I, anyway. I'm gonna run out I really love one. that that nostalgic kind of element to it because like I remember a specific whiskey that was a big part of of my journey you know like it was one that I gravitated towards you know for a really long time and you know I think that might be something I take for granted sometimes you know is that we have this plethora of incredible single cast whiskeys and these are all whiskeys that help kind of like build me in this industry and to be able to have them in single cask form is is really special. So, way to get all yeah. sentimental, Ben. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and make and me question, cry over here. <laughs> oh, well, there was a question um, for from Bordeaux Cliff saying, "Wasn't there a distillery two last month?" You know, it's funny. Yes, there, there was. We did have a cast from distillery two last month. However, uh, that was matured for you know, first fill Oloroso sherry butt, and I think this first fill bourbon barrel evokes the more familiar style that you would you would find on the shelf or what the distillery is putting up. I think that one from last month was a bit more of an enigma. And this is more of a, a classical representation of the spirit being first fill bourbon and being that most of space size scotch is in fact matured in, in bourbon. So the flavors and for me and the flavors and the aromas are lining up with what I, how I know that the popular spirit as um, being super discreet here. I'm gonna read the tasting so, notes real quick. Yeah. Okay, so it says a citric sherbet was followed by jelly garnished with mint. Following the arrival of a flower bouquet, we needed a grown-up orange juice. What's a grown-up orange juice? Like a mimosa? <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, well, I don't like... know either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I this, this, this is this is the grown-up orange juice. I mean, I think we're not thinking clearly here. We're, it is this. This is the grown-up orange juice, not the mimosa or tequila sunrise. Uh, this whiskey. I, I mean, this I, might be good as a mimosa, like yeah. a Scotch mimosa. I don't know. I try it. Would you mix it with orange juice or with? Uh, yeah. With, with okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I would put a splash of this in my orange juice and give it a whirl. Yeah. Probably delicious. Yeah I, put, yeah, I would put a splash of this in my orange juice, but I wouldn't put a splash of orange juice in that. You know what no. I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just let's just clarify for everybody watching this thinking, <laughs> you know, 
we're totally bouncing off the wall here. Let's let's move on. So guys, yeah, so that's a good one. First two, very sort of classical summer, in my opinion, like easy to enjoy. And that's kind of, that's the theme of the first two, I think. It's just easy to share with friends or family. You want to show them something that's special, of course, because everything's single cast, super limited. Unlikely they're going to ever taste either of these whiskeys. Hell, we're just tasting them for the first time. And, but it's still a flavor profile that's, I think, easy to appreciate. You know what I mean? I think that's the, that's, yeah. for me, that's the takeaway with what we've just gone through for the first two. And the second one, I think, is exquisite. Yeah. So, all right. It's probably ain't, sun, un, ain't Sunny D, says Bill. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, classic. Uh, yeah, what do we got? Let's go to number three. I'm so excited for this whiskey. All right. What do we got here? So, um, if, you guys catch my little Friday videos on our Instagram. This was in my glass and I was very stoked about it. I was excited to see it come down the pipeline. I was excited to see it on, you know, the roster that is our July outturn uh, because I've never personally experienced this in society form before. Um, I don't know if we've released a whiskey from this distillery like this um, prior to, but I'm very excited for it and it smells amazing. So. Yeah. And because of that, I've just added a banner. Follow, <laughs> uh, follow us on SMWS America on Instagram if you're not already. Jenna, as she's saying, she does put out every Friday a little video, kind of like a short little dive into this, kind of like what we're doing, which is one fifth yeah. of a, one fifth of it. I like yeah, some recaps or if there's any kind of important information, I try to share that with everyone on Fridays. So um, on Friday, this is what's in my glass. And so yeah, you, ready? you ready for yeah. it? <laughs> so this is cask 66.190. And I know you're saying, but we've had 66s before. We see them all the time. Well, this particular 66, which is called softly merging, is not peated. This is in our spicy and sweet flavor profile. So this is a 14 year um, and a second fill ex bourbon barrel at 59.8% ABV. Nice. Yeah. So what you're saying is basically, so most or everything we see from distillery 66 is in fact peated or, or I think usually mostly lightly peated. Lightly uh, peated. We've had an old and dignified, um, which was also like whisperly yeah. peated. Um, so I was very excited to see an unpeated 66. Yeah. yeah, it might be my first experience with uh, an unpeated spirit from the distillery of this one. Yeah. So interesting. I've never cool. I've never had this in society form. So this is the first. All right, take it away. So so you featured this last Friday and Yes. Oh. I guess what was your takeaway <laughs> then and, and what what that means that, you know, go to town, talk to us a little bit about this one. Okay, so I'm a huge tea head. I love tea. It's something I drink every day, all day. And the second I put my nose in this glass, all I got was like Earl Grey tea. Yeah. If you're a fan of Earl Grey, I mean, it's just like, just, it is such a like soothing and comforting aroma. Like, you know, life is crazy, having a bad day, have a cup of tea. Um, sometimes you can't have a glass of whiskey, have a cup of tea. And I don't know, this is just like a comfort whiskey. <laughs> I like <laughs> this. Sometimes, this. Sometimes, sometimes you can't have a glass of whiskey. So you have to drink tea because <laughs> life is rough and I have to drive. So therefore I have to drink tea or like, you know. Sometimes, a, sometimes like a hot cup of tea just does the trick. Yeah. And yeah i mean right <laughs> yeah am i, no, I, am I, I alone in this <laughs> no 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 it, it's you're i think i'm not getting my point across clearly I, i'm <laughs> i'm laughing because you're suggesting that it's like you can't drink whiskey all the time you know it's it's not about the tea yeah. it's more about the fact that you can't drink whiskey all the time sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to drink tea yeah yeah, yeah. you do or water <laughs> but or water. <laughs> who, does, or who, who does that <laughs> anyway all right Anyway, uh, Chris, Chris G says, damn it, Ben and Jenna, we're running out of cabinet and space here. So, um, well, Ben oh. just got a massive cabinet for whiskey. So send Ben an email and he will be able to hook you up on a bigger cabinet yeah. for whiskey. <laughs> yes. Um, and if you're late, the cabinet's not yet installed. It just was delivered. But it'll be up here 
tomorrow where I just have this empty wall. Um, so yeah. Um, so what do you think? Do you taste it? But, you know, let's, you know I, I did kind of casually just laughing about uh, the, the tea, but but I, I able to say that the mysticism of Earl Grey tea or something exotic on the aroma is, is really captivating right away. You know, like I think I, I'm totally in agreement with you. Like the tea uh, note is just black tea. It's like tobacco-y almost. It's, I don't know. There's just so much going on on the nose on this. And there is like a really nice, like soft sweetness to it. I can't really quite put my finger yet on what it is, but there is like a, a very soft, like sweet element, like almost like a, it's like pastry sweetness, like dessert sweetness. I definitely get it sort oh of like gosh. a dusty warehouse floor, um, which is something I get more in bourbon usually than, than malt whiskey. I mean, it's malty too, but you get a bit of that sort of like, like a, a wood dust, um, sort of like dampened oak, yeah. You've already had this, and you're still you're still into it, huh? I love this whiskey. Mm. I'm just gonna say it. I love this whiskey. It is. It's got yeah. texture. It carries through. I think nose and palate on this match beautifully. Um, you get those like big tea kind of notes. You get that kind of dusty like damp, woody workshop or like Dunnage Warehouse. You get like that element of it. Um, this is just, this is so good. <laughs> yeah, I think, I'm trying to think of how to put this, you know, and I'm, I'm just trying to put like our experience into context for, for you guys watching here, you know, to just to understand, having not tasted them yourselves, which one, you know, which whiskey is best for which occasion or, or for which palette. The first two, the, the space ciders we had are like bright, fruity, creamy, vanilla. It's easy yeah. to enjoy those at any time in any setting. And I was actually suggesting my personal opinion that that's an easy one to share with friends. You know, when I introduce them to cast drink, single cast whiskey, I think it'll be easy, be easy for them to like. This one, I'm just, uh, my personal opinion, uh, requires a little bit more focus. Like, uh, you know what I mean? I, I think the personality is not so bright and in your face you really need to be in a quieter room. And because I feel like something like this would be, if you're just in a social setting, you know what I mean? Um, unless you're like you know, like us, or we just talk about the whiskey and nothing else. And I think that's one thing, but if you're in having, there's a conversation going, you know what I mean? You're not fully paying attention to the whiskey, then I think it would probably be lost on you. And, and it's beauty wouldn't really, uh, I think be appreciated. Does that make sense? That's kind of what Yes, it makes. This, this is like one of those whiskeys that kind of like sets a mood. This is a mood kind of whiskey. Yeah. And I, I agree. I think, you know, being like in a dark room and like a big leather chair and there's like a fire going or, you know, the windows are open and there's a breeze and I don't know, there's like bats flying around the room or something. I think, you know, I'm just trying to set the scene here. Uh, yeah. I just think that this is definitely one of those whiskeys that, I mean, you can really take some time with and you can really dig a lot out of. And I really love that kind of like old mustiness about it. Um, that is a, a note that I, I really love and to kind of combine that with all of those tea elements. It's just, it's really, it's really freaking good. This is my old man whiskey. Yeah, it, that, that's good. I mean. I mean, congratulations. I mean, congrats me and then like I find the list. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I mean, sincerely, I mean, finding that's the whole point. You know, like, I was a you know, member of this club long before I worked with the company. And, and I just, my, my, you know, the, the excitement for me came when you find a whiskey that you're like, okay, this, I connect with this in a way. Um, and not every whiskey does go into move everybody in the same way. And so it's, mm -hmm. I, I say congratulations because you know, when you're just in the, not just the business of, but when you're passionate about finding those whiskeys, it, it's exciting to, you should celebrate when you find those. So um, I'm, I'm just glad for you. I think it's phenomenal, but I, it, it seems to be moving you in a way that it's personal to you. And I, and I, and I, just yeah. wanna, I don't want to take away from that. Uh, I, I don't, the bats flying in the room thing, I, I don't know that I would <laughs> be cool with that. I, I just think it's dark, like, you know, I don't know, cave. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like a buyer, like maintain concentration of the whiskey. 
and then there's just bats flying around and you're not like, oh my God, there's a bat in the room. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I don't know. I was just imagining my uh, Jewish mother in the room with bats and like, oh my God, there's a bat. <laughs> so, uh, all right, right on. So really, really good uh, whiskey overall. And, and Jenna, this is your own man whiskey, which is, which is, is fantastic. So 59.8% too. Wow, that's nearing 60% by volume. That's huge. Doesn't drink that way and to me. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. No. No, there's there's definitely, I mean, it could be because this is our third one, but there is like a a very just, I don't know, composed delivery on this whiskey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Hmm. I guess, you know, these casks are like songs, certain songs connect with people in certain ways, and I guess we could kind of look at it like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Um, well, listen, I, I would gladly talk about this one for another 30 minutes, seriously, but let's, um, let's move on. We know you're all eagerly chomping at the bits, waiting to see what's coming out. Again, all these whiskeys are dropping tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern yep. time. Um, if you're not yet a member of the society, you know, you still have time to, to sign up, join the club, become a member. Uh, the whiskeys will be available online in our shop, as well as over the phone. You can call us directly. And we'll talk you through the selection and uh, help you make it make a choice. Of course, during outdoor and day, the phones are a little busier, so we might not have the luxury of, of sort of having the same in-depth conversations we do during any other day of the, of the month, really. Um, but you're welcome to call as well and place the order that way. Let's move on to number four. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm stoked that you, you know, that you really connected with that one. I just think it's really cool. Yeah. All right, that is that is a Jenna whiskey for sure. The Jenna whiskey, yeah. The Jenna whiskey. All right. So this next one you were stoked about on paper. So let's look at that color. Yeah. Wow. Nice. That's so pretty. Okay. Well, I guess I can spill the beans on what it is we're about yeah. to drink. It's dark. So <laughs> it's deep. It's rich. It's dried fruits. Okay. It, this is cask G10.32. Um, it's called What's for Afters. And this is a 15 year single grain whiskey um, that spent 11 years in an ex bourbon barrel and then um, its final years in a second fill, heavy toast, medium char hogshead. And this is at sixty-two percent ABV. I'm so stoked! I'm stoked. It's just so funny that I'm excited too because, like, it was there was a time in my life when I just single grain whiskey wasn't even on my radar, you know. Yeah. And, and now I'm just just so thrilled to to be having it. Wow! What a nose! Yeah, yeah. So right, you know, well, I, yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the the heavy toast medium char. Well, well, it, it's it's interesting because uh, typically medium char is is more commonly found, obviously in this type of cask. But the heavy toast is, really brings out some spice. You know what I mean? Like the intensity yeah. of, of the of the yolk itself. Huh. I would, if tasting this blind, I would probably mistake this as a bourbon. And let me put this specific. If I were doing a blind bourbon tasting with like 10 bourbons, I yeah. might this actually know that maybe it would stand out more of my bourbon. But in this, this, in a Scotch whiskey tasting, I would definitely think this was a, a, a bourbon. It has that lavender. So it's a combination of really it's sort of like intense oak. It's, it's toasted, obviously the toasted oak. You, you get the little sort of wood smoke from the char itself in there. You get sort of like a red fruit. It's like a red berry. There is still that little bit of like a custard and vanilla, but it's got this sort of lavender incense thing going on that I find oh. common in a lot of sort of mid-teen uh, bourbons, like especially with like a full strength, a single barrel bourbon that's that's present in this one. It's wild. And I think that just comes down to obviously the intensity of the oak, but it's not oaky, like in a way that I, I, I actually don't really enjoy whiskeys that are so oaky. It's just intense you know what i mean it's not like it just you know what I'm does that even make sense am yeah. I even, no you're am making I total sense point? the oak is the char of the oak is present but it's not just like a damp 
you know, like just, I don't know, I'm trying to think of some whiskeys that spend way too much time in, in wood and you just taste like, it tastes like a splinter. Basically, this is, uh, <laughs> it tastes this is, like this a is, splinter. This is extracted, I think, all the right flavors, or rather just the aromas, at least, from, from the wood itself without overpowering the spirit. And the grain is just, uh, it's live, lively, as I'll put that. I feel, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is this is such a the nose on this is so wild. I'm I'm in agreement yeah. that you know you could there is like an element of this like I don't know when I nose a whiskey it's like you kind of get like a top layer of aromas and then you get like the deeper like it's like there are layers that you just kind of like dig out and I think like that top layer was very bourbon esque. I mean like that initial if somebody just kind of waved it by my face I'd be like yes that's that that's a bourbon it could definitely you know, pass for that. And then as I've been nosing it, I'm getting <laughs> like tropical, like sunscreen almost kind of notes on it. Like not in a bad way, you know, like when you go to the beach and you're putting on like sunscreen and it smells like pineapple and like all that, that tropical aroma. I'm definitely getting like a tropical note on this. Yeah. Yeah. And like, but it's creamy, like a creamy vanilla tropical type of note. And then that top layer is like that very bourbon esque kind of like whisper. This nose is crazy. Well, and here's the thing. And, and I, you know, I'm kind of just rattling off my opinion of the whis whiskey without really sort of thinking about it for a moment what, it, what we have here. This is, you know, likely it's a single grain whiskey. And so single grain means that the whiskey's spirits is originated from a single distillery, but being grain, it's typically a variety of different types of grains. And it's it's more often than not distilled in a column still, like bourbon or other most American whiskeys. So it's interesting, again, we don't know if there's corn in there or or whatever it would be in the mash bill, as we as we tend to call it here in America. The recipe, you know, the grain recipe. But the the production of it is is in essence, similar to bourbon, same stills for the most part, variety of grains. You know, this is a toasted oak, so it's you see you see more toasted oak, and I think in American whiskey, especially or at least in bourbon. So I think on paper, at least the production is is, is a Scottish, I think it's Scottish equivalent um, in many respects. Pickley Dude says, now I'm wondering what single grain Scotch whiskey aged new new charred oak barrels would taste like. Probably uh, bourbon if it's 51 percent corn, you know. This was distilled on July 12th, so it has a birthday coming up. Mm. The, the, this is. Yeah, man, I, I'm 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 on it. I'm I'm just I'm into it. This is yeah. this is wild. Yeah, this is so good. This I is mean, so good. This is wild. Yeah, yeah. This is this is. I mean, if there was a, like a musical analogy, like the first three whiskeys we had were sort of like uh, <laughs> down tempo, classical, because the distillery too classical. Third one was like Lana Del Rey, and now we're in, like <laughs> this is now this is like ACDC. Like this, you know what I mean? This is a total. Yeah. <laughs> rock, this is a rock and roll whiskey. Like there's no doubt about it. Um, but what? Whereas most bourbon, I mean, it's rare to get bourbons of this age. Most bourbon hasn't spent as much time in wood. It's spent a few years at, at most on average. This is a 15 year old whiskey and it really kind of shows the depth and complexity that you would want out of a 15 year old whiskey. Um, and it's just so different. It's just so different. So, so. This is insane. Yeah. I cannot yeah. like put my finger on this. I feel like every, like the nose was like very clear to me, but the palate, like I've taken now two sets of it and it's been a different experience each time. Like yeah. I'm getting something different each time, but again, yeah. great, has great texture. Um, yeah. The, I'm gonna read the tasting notes. Yeah. This says varnished wood and sticky toffee pudding with honey glazed figs. I can get the honey glazed figs. Mm. That is actually, that's like, that's it. That's spot on. Diluted, we peeled a tangy tangerine, roasted chestnuts, and flambéed bananas. Maybe that's the tropical kind of it's note so I'm getting. Yeah, this whiskey is wild. If you yeah, like a whiskey I that will kind of blow your mind and you'll have to kind of sit and like 
dig in and try to figure it out. This is like a puzzle of a whiskey. Um, definitely one for a deep dive. Wow. Yeah, I would say if you're a malt whiskey wow. drinker, which if you're watching this, you probably are a malt whiskey drinker. But if you also appreciate bourbon, this is if you don't like bourbon for whatever reason, and then you're entitled to that, you know, that preference. But if you don't enjoy bourbon, maybe this isn't for you. But if you do like both, I, I just think this is yeah. absolute. Uh, th this doesn't come around often. You know what I mean? This sort of it's like a hybrid experience. And and I think that the one thing again, I keep going back to this, the, what this offers that most bourbons don't is a bit more depth and and, and i mean no yeah. disrespect to bourbon it's not as much of a straight shooter you know like straight up kind of big explosive palette on the surface it's like very reminiscent of, of that the, the style and character of a bourbon but it's i think it's just a bit more uh thought provoking and, I, and if that's yeah. controversial by all means you can go ahead and comment below but but uh for me i think that's uh that's, that's the difference between malt whiskey and bourbon on average on average i, I know yeah. I, 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 I'm going to agree with you 100%. I think, you know, to kind of elaborate, I think that this just offers like a wider range of flavor. Yeah. Like you can really dig out a lot where some bourbons, you know, can be a little kind of one dimensional where you find yourself, you know, finding just like kind of uh, a solid note, whereas this is like, you're going here and here and down and up and left and right. Like there's just flavor kind of coming from every direction in this whiskey. And yeah, this is, this is, I've not tasted something like this in quite some time. Really wild. And the, wi and the yeah, and the wild thing about it is, is that, uh, you know, most of the whiskey of, of this, so single grain whiskey is being produced for blended scotch. You know, it's, it's really rare to, I think, experience like a you know single a, a, a single cast you know of of the spirit yeah and when it does come around it's, it's pretty cool because yeah i mean it's all coming about value price price per uh per year it's not really how, how it works anymore but but i think it's yeah it, it's it's pretty pretty solid value and this is with 150 dollars a bottle uh, yeah for 15 i think it's worth every penny and i think too oh, this the flavor it's just like so so good so good it's so good. And what a what a like a great kind of experience to get into single grain whiskey. I mean, I think this is definitely one of those whiskeys, especially if you're a fan of that kind of deep rich and dried fruits flavor profile and you've not tried a grain whiskey, like this is the ticket. So yeah, that I'm excited the, to hear what people have to think. Thing. Yeah. All right. I, I this is yeah, I don't not like care to play favorites, but I just that is <laughs> I'm wild by that one. The the first three have been fantastic and I really, really like I like them all for different reasons, but this one is, um, it's its not as much for everyone as maybe the first couple that we had in the lineup, but man, it's really just, uh, if you like malt with and bourbon, just give it a go and we'll stop talking about it. So, <laughs> um, all right, let's go to the last one. So we got the last one. Let me uh, hide this thing and then I'm gonna actually take one more sip because I don't want this to end. Mm. I didn't even add water to what? What was that? We didn't add water to any of these. <laughs> oh, I have, I have been, I have been. Oh. I kind of just quietly not saying it, but that was sixty-two oh. percent. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so good. That is, yeah. I think that is. It didn't drink like sixty-two percent. That was. That's. Yeah, that's that was crazy. wild. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. All right. Well. Yeah, must must we move on? Yeah, no, yeah, that was that was, <laughs> was fantastic. That was that was like a, that was a moving one for me. That was yeah. better than that was definitely a better experience. Um, than I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but I just that was yeah slightly different. Um, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, maybe give all the members a shot at getting a bottle, and if it's there, you know, a month down the road, maybe I'll uh. Pull it, pull the trigger. We, uh, we, yeah. we, we try not. We try to give you, you guys, know, you know, the first crack at all the bottles, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be disappointed with uh, buying that one. <laughs> so, you ready for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's okay? Last five. one. Let's do it. What do we last got here? Last one. So, for kind of all of our big peat heads out there, we are releasing five peated whiskeys this outturn, which is like. Kind of a big deal. 
I haven't seen this much peat in quite some time. So I'm, I'm excited to say that uh, we will have five different peated whiskeys for this outturn. And this just happens to be one of them. So this is cask. 10.213, a slice of Pete Heaven. And this is a seven year Isla and a second felt ex Oloroso, but at 60.5% ABV. Love the name of that. A slice yeah, anyway. of Pete Heaven. <laughs> and you guys can't seem to get enough of the uh, the young Islas, the heavily peated the Islas as well. Um, and I'm, I'm intrigued by this because we, we've seen a few from Slurry 10 within this sort of Old rest of sherry cask, and they've all been a little different. So I'm excited for this one, though, to see how it compares. <laughs> and, and right away, just in the glass, you know, obviously seven years old, but very light in color. So yes, it is. Which might suggest smell that it. this is the sherry. Smell it. Smell it. <laughs> yeah. And this is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, it's like buttery, popcorny, just like that peat just oh my gosh that smell is uh, well there's just something about that smell that man yeah it, to me it's i mean I, well, it reminds me of you know, years ago my first um a friend of mine brought back a sample from a islet of celery we won't name names um and it was up seven years old, actually. And I tasted it, and it was so wild and intense. It was so different from what I had experienced from whiskeys on the shelves. And it was just, you realize, like, wow, this is whiskey in its infancy. You know, it's probably, it's not really in, intended to be like this. But since that, in that, I'm just dating myself now, this is, like, the new norm. And I know we're kind of spoiled in, like, the Scottish Whiskey Society because we put out whiskeys like this. But this is different. And I think just whiskeys are getting younger just in the market. But... There was a time when this was just a wildly, you know, just different from anything. And I just think this is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm losing myself here. It's just, it's just <laughs> incredible. It's incredible that, that this is the norm, that this, this young whiskey that is so pure. And uh, there was a time when I was like, wow, people wouldn't enjoy this. And now people do. And it's just great. It's just great. This is. I don't know, I think that kind of goes back to like how powerful your sense of smell is because like for me, it's like I can like place myself in, you know, my memory based off of just smell, like it triggers so quickly for me. And just, I think this just reminds me of that moment that I just fell in love with peated whiskeys, you know, when I first got into it, I was like so turned off by it. I was like, I cannot drink this. Who in their right mind would drink anything like this? And like, I remember that moment in the whiskey that like totally converted me over. And I just remember mm -hmm. just smelling this whiskey and just like totally falling in love. It's like when I met my husband for the first time and, you know, he was wearing this cologne that even to this day, if I smell somebody like wearing it, I'm like chasing them down just so I can, you know, like give them a good whiff because it smells so good. And I don't know, this whiskey is just reminds me of that, like that moment when, you know, that memory just sticks and this is so good. <laughs> what, what was the cologne? I mean, I, I, I um, okay, yeah, one, so, sitting no, here wondering, like, um, well, what the hell? It was, it was by, uh, I believe the brand is called Creed. Oh my God. And yeah. I just know this. I, I, it was I can't remember which one it was he wore, but like I remember like when I met him for the first time, and I was just like, I don't really like you're really good looking, but you smell like really good. <laughs> like, we're not, a, we're not affiliated him. with this uh, the the French fragrance company called Creed. It's just it's just kind of funny how it comes up, and I just this is funny. Like I feel like every cologne. So you know what I'm talking like, about. <laughs> well, I know. I just feel like every cologne is marketed to men as like. The women will actually f will flock to you with this. If this one is the one they will like, and then like you describe one, there's one, and I did this with my husband, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, which one was it?" Because that was a uh, pores wide open. Jeez, <laughs> not the band cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Aventus, as a Bordeaux cliff said, Aventus is the one I was thinking. That that's their probably the one. Anyway, let's move yeah, on. I can't remember which I was one like, it was. Look at yeah. this. I just love that. I love that I'm not alone. Everybody knows the Creed fragrances. Green Irish Tweed. <laughs> or the, what was it? The Sun Mountain, Silver Mountain. 
Uh, no, I, I don't remember what it was, but I, I, I think that's what it was. <laughs> what was but I don't remember which one. It was like Santa. It started with an S. Oh, Santel. It was not. Or, yes, right, that's it. All right, we got to move on. We're not doing don't the. Smell we're it. not affiliated with Creed. With Creed <laughs> fragrances. Well, this is no, but it, but it's just funny, you know. I mean, this is unrelated, and we got to go through this whiskey. But um, what a out turn, weird outturn for you, Jason. Sorry, guys. This is we're totally going off on tangents. And if you don't like the tangents, by the way, just just speak up. Totally, uh, we seem to have more viewers now than we did at the beginning. So people aren't leaving for the tangents. Um, but it's just funny because when you, know, I don't know if you guys can share this. If you, if you agree with me, or if you've had a similar experience, since really getting a whiskey, I've just found a greater appreciation for aromatics in general. Like I'm smelling whiskeys all the time. I'm thinking of what do they make me, what, what do they remind me of, what do they smell like? Do I, I certainly have opinions about this. You know, I was, I've been blogging about this on Instagram, which is un, you know, un, unaffiliated to what we're doing here with the society. Um, and so, yeah, like I've formally, I've learned more about like the history of fragrances as an art, kind of like whiskey, uh, I view whiskey as an art. So it's funny, but it's also funny to see the comments here, like the different fragrances being shot, shot out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, the nose uh, um, it's it's it is a powerful thing <laughs> the comments are killer dude uh daniel cleric says jokes on jenna the fragrance was actually nickelback <laughs> dan you and i talk almost every other week <laughs> look at this graph look at this graph all right so let's get to the whiskey guys sorry we, we, we need to talk about this this is coming out tomorrow we gotta put our serious faces on um <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> so this is a seven-year-old uh, Isla whiskey and a second fill Oloroso. But now what's interesting though is that going back to the color, it is very light in color. And it is. This is the, full the, maturation, the, by the way. And it's full maturation. It's but Oloroso. but you have the question. influence, the influence of sherry is very, very subtle. You know, it's just sort of like a very soft and round the edginess is is just sort of mellowed a little bit. If it, I feel like I have just off the nose. If it were an American elk, it'd be a little bit harsher, maybe a little bit more stringent. This is a bit more rounded, and which is surprising for such a young whiskey at such a high ABV, sixty point five percent. Yeah, yeah. This is um, the nose is I get like buttered popcorn on the nose, and there's another. I remember there was another Isla whiskey that I really get like a big buttered popcorn <laughs> kind of note on. Um, this is like full, just peaty buttered popcorn. Um, and I think nose and palate on this match beautifully. This is just salty. It's ocean maritimey. It's, you know, it's like you licked a rock that's been sitting in the sea for a million years, you know, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to listen to you, Jenna. I just can't stop thinking of these comments that you guys have been dropping about the Nickelback and it was pores wide open. I mean, I just, I, I'm with you, and this is super unprofessional. And uh, do you think Creed yeah. likes whiskey or Nickelback likes whiskey? Maybe we need to get them to do an outturn preview tasting with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna taste this one real quick. Apologies. This is, uh, Evan says this will be my third distillery ten that's open in feel feeding my peat obsession. Yeah, I feel like, you know, peat is one of those things that, I mean, oh. I try to like take a break from it and I try to like, you know, get into other things and then I have a whiskey like this and it just brings me right back. I mean, it is just, it's a hard thing to not love. To me, this is probably the most enjoyable cask I've had from the, uh, the peat during from the distillery. Um, now, the Silly 10 puts out a lot of unpeated whiskey as well, which I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love an un unpeated Isla whiskey. Yeah. yeah. I have a, a legitimate appreciation for that. Um, when it comes to peated, I, I, for whatever reason, it's not always connected with, for me personally, and I've tried and tried and tried. This one is so well just like executed and balanced in the soft sherry notes with this sort of coastal maritime flavors. Um, it's salty and briny, but also just warm. You know what I mean? It's like a wool sweater. Very warm. In a cold uh, sort of winter on the coast kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's, But it's really got a kick to it. It's not subtle at all. The, 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 the sherry notes are subtle, but the whiskey is subtle. Itself is not, yeah, but the whiskey is not subtle. You know, it's intense. No. 
Um, yeah. So I'm, it's hard. Like I'm just trying to think. So I'm this really, I'm jiving with this thing, but, uh, yeah. uh you guys got yeah. to stop with the Nickelback comments. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. Um, but this is, uh, yeah. Look at this class. This is look at this class. I mean, this is just amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm gonna read the tasting notes back to being, you know, <laughs> serious. We're officially like banned um, from out term preview tastings moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, ban I'm, I'm banning us. Uh, <laughs> so this says unapologetic. Uh, yeah. Smoke with hints of salty rock pools as we gaze into a moonlit sky with a storm rolling in off the sea. Well, mm, with bats flying above. There you yeah. go. That's good. With bats, there are bats. Yeah, so that that that's I think it's just it's just such a classical. Uh, the word is classical. There was some there was another one earlier that we had uh, the two point one two four that I described as a classical representation of space. And this is classical Isla. I just think the execution yeah. is spot on. I I just love. I agree. I feel like if you know, depending on, listen, let's just check our egos at the door for a second. Depending on how experienced you really are with with, with Isla whiskey or single cask whiskey. Um, you, you may or may not be able to decipher this, but I, I feel that the sherry, you might not know it's sherry right away. You know what I mean? But when mm -hmm. you start to think about it and you think of just the the, the warmth yeah. of it, like the subtle warmth of it, the thing of the fact, wow, it's seven years old, but it's not that intense. Like it's bold, but it's not just like totally clawing at your throat. Yeah. Um, that's likely due to the sort of a very subtle sherry wine. And it is, just sort of on the back it is very know? subtle. But I, I yeah. think that's what I like about it. I think I, that I like that it's like you really get like that just like you said that classic like just very well rounded like Isla gusto in this whiskey and then that little oh, yeah. just like whisper of you know that sherry like comes in is like oh wait I'm here um it just works really well together and uh, I I really like this whiskey a lot yeah this is really yeah. good so that so that concludes our five um Question for you guys, for everybody who, if you stay with us from the beginning and saw, and saw say through all five, which ones stick out at you? Which ones are most appealing? Or which ones are you most excited for? Um, you can pick one if you want, but, but share a comment. I'm, I'm curious to hear, you know, obviously we're tasting these whiskeys and just sharing it with you. And just kind of curious based on your, our feedback, uh, which ones are you most excited for? Um, give that a minute and then I'm going to take another sip of this and we'll pull up the, the full list oh. of what's coming out t tomorrow too. But I'm curious before we share that. those, just focusing on yeah. well, just first to focus on these five. Obviously, Jenna, I mean, we're not I mean, we're not here picking favorites. I mean, I think every every one <laughs> and I think that's what I've learned. I've learned that, you know, everybody has different preferences. And I've you know, talking to members over the phone for years, I've learned that something that I might really yeah. like, they might have a totally different uh concept of what is good and what's not good, or, or what's for them and what's not for them. Right. Every whiskey is obviously good. Um, but but I think you know, what, what really intrigues you, you know, you know, tonight, that's really the question. And I guess you were talking the 66.1, I know the unpeated Highland whiskey from Minnesota that's typically put in unpeated malt. Uh, yes. That, that one really spoke to you. Is that still the case? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's a, it, the 66 and 10 are kind of, you know, having a duel on my palate at the moment, but, um, yeah, I think that's that's 66 is just like it's like such an emo like kind of thing of me to get emotional about that whiskey. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like I'm gonna just finish my night with a glass of that and some my chemical romance and call it a day. <laughs> um Evan Stevens. What about says, you? The uh uh, well, first of all, Daniel Dyer asked a question about the last one. Did that spend seven years in a sherry butter? Was that a finish? That was a full term. Uh, term. Gentle sherry cast maturation. Evan Stevens says the unpeated 66 and the 10 sort of stick out to him. Uh, Nick Bishop says, I would go for the 10 for sure. Uh, Stuart Wright says, I'm curious how much tobacco flavor there is in 66.1. I know softly merging. Um, subtle. Subtle, yeah. Yeah. I, think I do like tobacco. Subtle. It's like that tea, tobacco y kind of like that black tea and tobacco kind of, you know, mashup. Yeah. Um, I, I did get some like yeah, like subtle. the chewing tobacco or tobacco leaf, in, you know, but yeah. but it was subtle. I, I thought uh, Danielle yeah. Stewart says ten. Uh, Bill Monty says I have to say that G ten is 
got me excited more than the rest. Okay, yeah, um, that was super exciting. Uh, Bigly do, I love Indie Distillery too, and also the G10s I've had. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the Distillery 2, very popular sauce distillery that I think most of us have gone through. Uh, this single cask representation is something to experience, you know what I mean? Uh, and Chris says, yes, it's all about the 2.124 for me. And um, talking about another one they've tried and it's been unreal. So yeah, this is this is wild again. That's bourbon barrel that we have here tonight. Um, and so uh, Joe just wants to listen to a little go back, or maybe he's, he's suggesting that you should listen to a little go back tonight when you uh, <laughs> go hang with hang with the bats. Uh, everyone play Nickelback while splurging on the outturn of mine. Guys, if if anybody has a contact with Nickelback and they would like to join us for an outturn preview tasting. Um, Make it happen. Anyway, until then, let's uh, take a look at this sheet. Want to top up the list? Yeah. Yeah. This list. All right. Let me get that tossed up there. All right. Well, there it is. So, yeah. So, take us through the list here. Well, our bottle of the month is going to be from Distillery. 112 um, and a second fill Madeira Hogshead, which is very exciting. Um, if you have any questions about the Bottle of the Month Club, please um, you can check it out on our website or you can give us a call and we'll be happy to kind of explain to you how that works. Um, and then it looks like we have a 115 in there. We have a 135, my beloved 135s. Um, and ooh, a 149.1. Hmm. Yeah, so point oh. one is pretty exciting because the, the first yeah. cast from a new distillery will, will be in the lineup, and obviously as a young, five years old. Um, yes, uh, um, and see. that distillery. So that is going to be a peated malt, and I know that distillery. Um, they are at around thirty to thirty-five ppm. Um, if you're curious, um, and I know that will be a one per member um, limit on that. Um, I'm really stoked to kind of see that in there. I'm kind of, you know, sad we won't get to taste it, but I know that's going to be uh, quite popular. And let's see what another heavily peated 16. Those 16s have been just, just stellar. I have not had one that I've not liked. Yeah. I've liked every single 16 that we have ever tasted. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're big on it. A bit of a beast. Uh, I like the name of that too. I mean, look, yeah. And the question is, uh, just talk, talk to me about the seventy-two. There's a seventy-two point one hundred one called Hammer Punch coming up. It, Hammer seven Punch. years in a, in a in a Panamanian Ooh. rum barrel, which would be really wild and young and sprightly. So it's I mean, typically we see rum casks used for double maturation or, or finishing, as it's referred to. So never really just a uh, full term, you know, young full term yeah. in, a, in a rum barrel. That'll be really wild. Um, that will be hope, hope to try that one at some point, but yeah. And then we have a seven year distillery 30, the nutcracker. Yeah. And toasted that's in a toast. refill toasted Oak, but yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be wild. And I really wish. Yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, uh, comment below if you'd like to see us taste all of the whiskeys next time. Because we can, <laughs> we, I think we should start a petition to try every single one. Yes. Um, yeah. I, you know, yes. Maybe we should do that. Uh, well, never mind. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can pull some strings and, and petition for an all day long outturn preview tasting. You know, we, yeah. we just start a breakfast, you know, and you have you have tea because you can't always drink whiskey. And then uh, <laughs> we go there. So we comment. So the G8, uh, G8.16, mature and energetic, 31 years old. Uh, that's pretty wild. And G8, and the comment from Bill is the G8 with the age range looks too good to pass up. I think that's just a that's a great value in, in grain whiskeys is you can get really old yeah. uh, spirits. And I think you know just uh, the, pr the, pr the prices for those are, are very different from that of malt whiskeys, of course. So the cost for us to acquire these these casks are it's very different. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then we have that forty two point. Oh, sorry. I wanted to just talk about that forty two point five six that twenty six year. I believe that is uh, the peated side of that distillery yeah that'll be wild Cask 4256 yeah 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 that'll be pretty well there's a question of what does htmc stand for that stands for uh, heavy toast medium char 
which is what we had um, the G10.32. We had, oh, that's where it says HTMC, yeah. That's one we had today, which I've just re-poured some more into this class here. So. Well, So that's, that's it. it. Take, a, that's, take a screenshot if you'd key. like. Otherwise, we'll be back up on the replay. Um, and beyond that, um, any closing remarks? I guess we should figure out what window, when those switching. Any any closing remarks, Jenna, that you have? Any thoughts? Uh, final thoughts yeah, just, just remember that if, you know, again, I can't stress this enough. If you have any questions about these, please pick up the phone and call us. Um, it'll be myself or one of my incredible teammates. Um, and we're happy to talk to you about any of these whiskeys. Um, tomorrow, too, our promotion with the glassware starts. So any three bottles from the South Turn um, up until the 14th of July, you'll get two free society glasses. Um, we'll tack those along in your package. And yeah, this was a lot of fun. I think we had a, a pretty wild little selection. So yeah, this was yeah. This and was I, just, I, just, I just want to say thank you to everybody for, for tuning in and, and sticking with us uh, through yeah. this. And over an hour, we, we did go through some tangents. I guess that my closing uh, <laughs> comment would be a question for everybody. You know, what do you think of these outdoor preview tastings? What would you like to see differently? Um, do you want us to go off in tangents? Do you want us to just <laughs> do? No, seriously. I mean, what? Yeah, ultimately, we're, we're, we're literally we're doing these to uh, add value to the, the members and 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 make it easier to help decide which whiskeys to, to you know, how to navigate our outturn and hear honestly just honest opinions uh, from at least a couple people who are chasing these whiskeys. But you know, if there's any suggestions you have in terms of how we present the whiskeys, if you want us to spend less time on each one and just get right to the points, uh, we can do that. If you want us to go off in tangents. We can just go wild and do that as well. So it's uh, Amy Spaxson says more tangents. Okay. Um, so yeah, we. But it's. I think ultimately this is for you, and you know, Jen and I can just go do this. Like we can just end broadcast and go talk about whiskey for another few more hours. And this is normal for uh, for us to just talk about this sort of thing. But this is for you. So uh, let us know what you'd like. Uh, I will tell you. We'll be bringing on more guests. You know, moving forward, some other, particularly some other YouTubers in the coming months, particularly for our mid-month outturns. So you'll just see some new faces in and out. Our, our, our team will still be here doing our main outturn every month. But uh, I just, I don't know, we've heard some feedback. It's good to hear, uh, you know, other members, other opinions, you know, people who are sort of newer to it as well, uh, which is, I think, as good as an equal representation for the, the varying levels of, of whiskey sort of experience that, that our members have. So um yeah so jose says would be interested to join while you <laughs> assemble and organize your shelf okay yeah um we'll hope to get to that uh here soon so uh, and zach says i like a natural whiskey conversation so okay yeah keep the comments coming let us know uh when this repost you know when the reply goes up feel free to add a comment and uh you know, we'd love to hear from you and we'll keep it going so thank you all jenna thank you that was fun yeah thank you uh, yeah that's always one. always a Always a treat to get to drink and talk whiskey with you, Ben. So okay. anytime. Well, everyone have a safe and a uh, fun week. Good luck tomorrow and uh, reach out uh, yes. at one o'clock Eastern time. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Mm -hmm.